Hello to my trigonometry kiddos. This is Mr. Butterfield. I need a sub in class. I'm just going to a doctor's appointment is all. I'm going to miss my morning classes. So uh, I made this video to fill in for the notes. Keep in mind that we're on page 22. We're doing section 1-6. You will be turning in these notes on Google Classroom along with your homework assignment once you have that finished. Um, so pay attention. Take notes. It does wrap around the stuff that we did earlier. By the way, your group tests were, are graded. Uh, I didn't get them up online yet. So if I run out of time tonight, I will get those online uh, for you to see tomorrow. And since I am not going to be there to actually give them back to you and talk to them, we'll do it the next time we meet. But um, if the scores aren't online by the time you're watching this video, later on on Thursday, I'll have them up online so you can see it. Uh, and see what it does for your grade. A lot of them were very good scores. I did a good job working together. Um, what I did is I, I sort of prepped my paper. I'm using some cheap software at home to make this video, and I got to keep the videos under 15 minutes. So in order to do that, I prep my paper. You may need to pause it and sort of just do a little setup uh, real quick. I'm going to do that on each problem. They're already set up, so when you get to the next problem, you may need to pause it and put these things down. Now, here's what the problems are going to look like today. They're going to give us the tangent, the sine, the cosine. They can give us any one of these as a fraction. But to be a little bit tricky, it's going to have the negative sign out in front instead of telling you, hey, does it belong with the top number or does it belong with the bottom number? And that could be, that's really the one tricky part that we got to figure out. They do tell us it's in the fourth quadrant, which is nice. Sometimes they don't tell you what quadrant it's in. You got to use this all students take calculus and sort of figure out other clues that won't be as necessary today. They're going to tell us what quadrant it's in. So what I want you to do for a problem like this is let's set up our triangle without the numbers, though. Fourth quadrant would have a ray. We make a triangle and theta goes here just like this right angle here. We know that tangent. Let's put this down as a reference. So. Katoa. We know that the tangent is opposite leg over adjacent leg. It doesn't use the hypotenuse at all. Okay, so should this negative go with the opposite on the top or the adjacent on the bottom? Well, when you look at this, adjacent is the X number and opposite is the Y number. All right, for this quadrant where it's looking here. Well, if you're in the fourth quadrant, we know that the X numbers are positive and the Y numbers are negative so I know this has to be positive this has to be negative and the hypotenuse well we'll figure that out later hypotenuse is always positive always positive no matter what quadrant I'm in opposite over adjacent well now that I know that the opposite has to be the negative number I know this has to be negative and this one has to be positive so this negative goes with the three on top not with the four on the bottom so that's the tricky part of these problems. you got to figure out, does a negative belong with the top number or with the bottom number? All right, now that I know that, this is negative 3, this is 4, and hopefully you instantly recognize, oh, they're using common right triangles, making it easier for us. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle, hypotenuse is 5. If you don't recognize that, use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what is the hypotenuse. That's going to be 9 plus 16. 25 and when you square root I'm sorry that's c squared when you square root it you're gonna get five that's an equal sign you get five is equal to c now we can you can put five on the hypotenuse now we can fill all these in the one that they gave us was tangent negative three-fourths we can do the reciprocal right away negative four-thirds sine here's theta Always by the origin over here. Here's theta is opposite negative 3 over the hypotenuse, which is 5. And you can put that negative out in front, kind of like what they did when they gave us a problem. Let's do the reciprocal. This time I will put the negative in front. Negative 5 thirds. Cosine is the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. 4 over 5. Reciprocal. 5 over 4. And that's what all the problems are going to look like. They're going to give you one of the ratios. They're going to be a little tricky with the negative sign. They're not going to blatantly tell you it's the top or the bottom number that's negative. So we have to sort of figure it out for ourselves. All right. So you may need to pause it again. 
set up your X, Y axis and your six trig ratios off to the side. I'm just doing that. I'm just doing it this way to sort of save time. Um, remember, my videos have to be less than 15 minutes. Otherwise, my whole program crashes. This is the third time I'm doing it. That's why I'm saying it. All right. So I'm in the second quadrant. Let's draw that right away. Second quadrant. Make a triangle out of it. It's not really drawn to scale. Like one should be shorter than the other or something like that. And this is theta. All right. Now I'm in the second quadrant. Obviously, this is my hypotenuse. Opposite is the Y number. And adjacent is the X number in this case. So when you're looking at this, when you're looking at this, one of these has, to, when you're in the second quadrant, the adjacent, the X number has to be the negative number and the opposite has to be a positive number. Keep that in mind. That has to be positive. This has to be negative. Your X is negative. Then you go up. Your Y is positive. The sine of Sokotoa is the opposite over the hypotenuse. In this case, that's a positive and a positive. Hypotenuse is always positive. So this is going to be just plain old 5. That's going to be 13. And hopefully there's a few of you going, oh, that's a common right triangle. I know what this one is. If you don't, use Pythagorean theorem. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. 25, 169. Subtract 25. You get 144. Square root it. And you get B to equal 12. Except when I'm in this quadrant it's actually negative 12 for this part it's going to be a negative 12 because the adjacent when you're in quadrant two the x numbers are negative or if i'm in quadrant three the x numbers are going to be negative they gave us this one five over 13 so i can do the reciprocal 13 over five let's do cosine now cosine is that going to be positive or negative think about it cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, in this case that's a negative 12, over 13, do the reciprocal for secant. And then we got tangent, tangent is the opposite over adjacent, again, is that going to be positive or negative? Opposite is 5, adjacent, so O over A, Toa, Soka Toa, I forgot to write that down here, Soka Toa. Sokotoa. The opposite is a 5, and the bottom is a negative 12. Now, you don't have to write the negative in the bottom. You can put it out in front, kind of like how they did the refraction. If you put it in the bottom, I'm not taking any points off, but you're going to see it like it was in the, in the very first problem. It's going to be out in front, and then when you flip it over, it would look more like it's out in front instead of just carrying with the 12 or carrying down below with the 12. All right, if you need a setup, Pause your notes or pause the video for a minute. Set up your notes. Give it a, an X, Y axis. All right. So like the angles going around sine, cosine, tangent and all that. Let's write those down. And we're ready to go. This time the cosine is negative four over seven and theta. It looks like that a hard time printing it in there. And theta is in the third quadrant. So one, two, third quadrant. So it's going to look like this with the ray, like it spins around to here, and then we make a triangle out of it. Okay, so let's fill in what we know. Adjacent is the X number. That's That's got to be negative. And then it goes down, so the opposite has to be a negative. The X it will be a negative, and the Y will be a negative. So adjacent negative, down, it's opposite negative, because we're in, like if they give you this point, it be a negative. And a negative. Here is my hypotenuse. Always positive for the hypotenuse. Now the one thing they gave me was this. Negative four sevenths. I can do the reciprocal. Negative seven fourths. Oh, I got two of them done already. Now I gotta find the other ones, right? So the negative four sevenths, we gotta figure out, well, if it's a negative fraction, only the top or only the bottom was negative, and then it turns the whole thing into a negative. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So, I forgot to write it again. So, ka, toa. So, katoa. 
knowing that the hypotenuse is always a positive number, well, that means this negative must belong on the top as the adjacent. So this is negative 4, and the hypotenuse is the 7. That's the negative 4, and that's the 7. That's not a common right triangle. There is no 4 blank 7. So what we do is a Pythagorean theorem. You put 4 or negative 4, because when you square it, it'll come out positive. Plus the other leg, it's missing. You can call it x if you want. Equals c squared. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I get 16. b squared, 49. When I subtract 16, right, I got to subtract the 16. I'm going to get 33. And then we square root it. So I'm going to do a part two video that you'll also have to take down. But I'm going to review radicals because I saw a lot of you on the quiz and test. Like you got to this point and you're, you're floored. Like what do I do with that? How do I break it down? So square root of 33, some kids might think, well, you could split it into square root of 3 and square root of 11, but you could, you don't have to do that. Those, Neither one of those has a square root. There is a not a nice square root of 3 or a nice square root of 11. Those are decimals as well. So we're going to leave it as a negative square root 33. It's a negative x and a negative y. So it's a negative adjacent and a negative opposite. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so I'm going to do negative root 33 over hypotenuse 7. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. This is adjacent over hypotenuse. Opposite over adjacent, so opposite is negative root 33. Adjacent is negative 4, and because it's a negative on top and a negative on the bottom, they cancel, and it's actually a positive root 33 over 4. For cosecant and cotangent, you got to be careful because when I do the reciprocal, I'm going to show it up here. Now, I won't, I don't make it look like it's part of that, but it's the reciprocal is a 7 over root 33. You can't leave a square root on the bottom, so we're doing this on the test. Square root of 33, square root of 33. On the top, you get negative 7 square root 33 over regular 33. And when I do that on the bottom, I'm sorry, not on the bottom, but when I do that for cotangent, 4 over root 33, because they're both positive now, multiply root 33, top and bottom. 4 root 33 over 33. Now this concludes the notes for 1-6, but I'm not done. I'm going to do It'll be shorter. I'm going to do on what is page 27. There, it's a blank page on 27. Turn to page 27, quote unquote 27. I don't even think it's numbered. But it's the first blank page. We're going to do a review on simplifying radicals next.